Hello, are you all here? Hey, Wenyan. Good morning, Alaya. Morning, teacher. <laughs> So, Alaya, is um is Arabic your first language? No. What is your first language? Please tell me. Mm, Malay, Bahasa. Ah. Oh, okay. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I was just like thinking because I know like little words and expressions in Chinese, but I'd only one in Arabic. So I thought I'd go with that first. To show you my one word that I know in that language. Okay, hey everyone. Hey Angela. Hey Lai. Great to see you. Hey Peggy. Oh, Shinro, that's a shame about your camera. Hey Jeff, always good to see the top of your head. And Core, is your camera working today? Great. Okay, just one second. And let's see, do we have everyone here? And Anthony, is your camera working today? You will all definitely need your microphones today. As if you remember, we're going to do a run through of speaking part two. Okay, I well, just all give me a moment to get up the, the correct file. And I want to start by asking you all, uh, asking you all a question, as I normally do. Okay, so my question to you, I'm going to ask each of you. I'll ask Wan Yun first, because yours, your camera is right next to my camera, uh, your face on the Zoom. So uh, you're first. <laughs> so Wan Yun, why do you think I might be happy today? Oh, and the purpose of me asking you that is not to get the right answer. The purpose is to get you practicing those models <laughs> so, and speculating. So why do you think I might I might be happy today? You might be happy today because The weather in there must be good. Okay, so for that sentence, we'd say the weather, sorry, the weather over there. That was a nice sentence. The weather over there. Great, so that's a really nice sentence she said. So I realized that I that you reframed what I said, so you might be happy, but definitely try to experiment with other phrases. So like perhaps, or maybe it's because, or it could be it, or it might be as you used, or you could say it must be because. So all these different phrases that you can use. Okay, so uh, a liar, why do you think I might be happy today? I might be happy today because my mom cooked my favorite food. <laughs> okay, that is, that sentence absolutely works. Although I wouldn't know that you're, oh, because it sounded like you said your mother, but you mean my mother? Yeah. Ah, okay. Very nice sentence. Very nice. Excellent. Just remember that because we can say might, might be, could be. You could even say should be, so you should be happy because that's a, a bit assertive though, a bit. Um, or you could use what's like perhaps, maybe, possibly, must be. So all those different range of things. Okay, 
Anthony, it's your turn. Why do you think I might be happy today? Um, you might be happy because it's possible your kid's very obedient today. <laughs> that was a really nice sentence. Okay, a slight, very slight change. So only slight, okay? You did so well. So it is possible that you just missed the that um, that today uh, your son you know everyone's different but I have this, this personal opinion that kid is always a bit disrespectful to refer to a child but I think I'm the only person who thinks this because everybody else uses the word kid and kids but I just personally have some like negative associations with the words and find it disrespectful. So in my correction, I'm just saying your son. Uh, so it's possible that today your son. Mm, and I think it makes more sense to actually use the perfect, although present simple is fine as well, has been obedient. Very nice sentence, Anthony. Uh, we could say, we, as well as obedient, we could say, well behaved. Could say, has been a good boy. <laughs> That's another thing, way we can say that. Okay, very nice, Anthony. And Angela, why do you think I might be happy today? In my opinion, I think you might be happy today because you receive a surprise gift. That was really lovely. I just didn't hear whether did you did you put receive into the past tense? I just didn't think I heard the d received received. received. Maybe. Maybe you did say it. I just didn't quite catch it. But otherwise, that was really good. Excellent. Okay. So, uh, oh, all the cameras keep moving around. Uh, Lai, why do you think I might be happy today? You might be happy today because uh, today might be your birthday. <laughs> Very nice. Wonderful. Thank you. That sentence was absolutely fine. Just remember, everybody. Um, I want you to not always say it might be. You can say could be, should be, perhaps, maybe, possibly, must be. Try to use another one in your answer. Okay. So, Peggy, why do you think I might be happy? Uh, you might be happy because you finally can have an extra lesson for us. Oh, <laughs> oh God, I absolutely, I absolutely wish I have an all day meeting today. I'm so sorry, class. I want to give you the extra time today. I absolutely do. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately, I can't. Can you say your sentence once more, Pei? Uh, you finally can have an extra lesson for us. Okay, yeah, your sentence is correct. Uh, absolutely, everything there was correct. Thank you so much, Peggy. And I am so sorry that I cannot give you the extra time this week. My plan was to give it to you last week, but the nanny called in sick and there was no one to look after my son for the extra week. And this, and today I have uh, an all day meeting with Cambridge actually for examinations. And it's something that is absolutely mandatory. I cannot miss it. And it starts exactly 10 o'clock. So that's the exact time the class finishes. So as soon as we finish, I have to rush off to my meeting. I'm so sorry, class. Okay, Jeff, can you tell me why you think I might be happy? Uh, so I could barely hear you. All I he heard was the word maybe. Hey, you just got a good news. Ah, okay. So although that is correct, we'd say received. 
instead of got good news. Maybe you received good news. That was a really good sentence, Jeff. I just would recommend received instead of got. And also, class, when you're writing, uh, so in the writing part, please try to avoid the word get, because get is just considered very like um sophisticated. Like even in informal writing, we wouldn't use the word get. Usually we would use the word receive or you know to become or just another verb, just avoid the word get. We only really use it in spoken, informal spoken English. All right, Cor, it's your turn. Why do you think I might be happy today? You might be happy today because it's possibly your birthday or there might be something special or good happen to make you happy. Thank you so much. That was a really good sentence. Um, yes, I asked a lie already. Uh, Chanel, would you like to hazard a guess? And I'll write that expression in the, in the box as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you might be happy because you're probably going to a uh, fine dining restaurant with your husband today <laughs> oh that that's a that's a lovely sentence i like that and also i wish <laughs> although actually i'm on a diet so and i'm quite enjoying my diet um i don't know about you guys but like, i've got so used to like dieting food that the idea of something like something like extravagant is making just makes me think oh maybe i'm feeling a bit unwell now because i've just got so used to like simplistic uh like healthy meals <laughs> but that would be that would be lovely okay now nicholas is your microphone working today because you are our final person So actually, the, the, the real reason, um, well, normally every Saturday I'm happy for this class, happy to see all of you. Um, but the specific reason is because I have um, a weekend, uh, my son is away, and I can do some things that I want to do. I have this class, another reason for being happy. And tomorrow, a new movie comes out in the cinema. Oh no, sorry, it came out today. Or was it yesterday? Uh, anyway, it's just come out. It's an anime called My Hero Academia. The third movie has just been released and I'm going to see it tomorrow. I'm so excited. Okay, everyone. That was a really great effort, everybody. Now, in the exam, when you are asked a question, it is very typical that you should use the question frame to help you frame your own answer the way you all did. However, in this exercise, I really wanted you to vary your responses. So you could have said, you know, you could be happy because, or, you know, you could say, well, you should be happy. We're here, we're your class. So that's an example with should be. You could have said, Perhaps you're happy because it's your birthday. Maybe you're happy to see us. You're possibly happy because um, you're going to a restaurant tonight. Or you must be happy because it's a weekend, it's a Saturday. So you see how you, all of you, pretty much all of you said might be but you could have easily replaced it with could be, should be, perhaps, maybe, possibly, or must be. And those are just some options. There are many other options as well. Okay, everyone. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm still recovering from a chest infection that I had last weekend. 
I think maybe you remembered that I couldn't really speak very well, but the last class of the class before, still recovering. Anyway. Okay, so I want to show you what it is we're going to go through. <clears throat> so we did a listening in the lesson before last. And in the last lesson, I pointed you towards some really interesting vocabulary that you heard within the listening. And it's re some really good everyday common phrases in English with in the context of talking about relationships. And in the last lesson, I gave you the presentation and I said to you that if you wanted to look at the vocabulary ahead of time, that was an optional homework. And I said optional because you're going to, you can do it as an exercise in this class. So that's the first thing we're going to go through. We're gonna look at the vocabulary from the listening and you have to mix and match the terms, um, so the phrases with their meaning. Now you may need a dictionary for some of the definitions because there are words within the definitions that you might not know, and that's okay. So then I'm going to give you a reminder of the non-modal based language that you can use for speculating. I actually already put some of these in the chat. So for instance, possibly, perhaps, maybe. Those are our examples of adverbs that you can use to speculate. So in English, you can use adverbs, such as those examples, or you can use modals to speculate. And the key to succeeding in speaking part two of the exam is to master A, the language of comparison and contrast, and B, to master the language that you need in order to deduct and to speculate. And when I say deduct, this is essentially part of speculation. It's you looking at the image and thinking, okay, well, the guy is smiling and he's with an attractive girl. So your deduction is, you know, maybe the girl is his girlfriend and he's possibly happy because he's in love with her and he's happy to be with her, for example. So you really have to master the language that you need in order to make speculations and deductions of that kind. That's the key to succeeding in part two. It's also fantastic language for you to learn and to master in order to help you get a higher grade generally for your speaking and even if you use it in your writing as well. Of course, using it correctly. Okay, so there'll be a reminder of that. And then I'm gonna give you 10 minutes of individual revision and practice of modals and language for speculation. So at that point, I will put you into the breakout rooms and I'll try to make these like quite large groups and you can interchange. So I recommend you spend about five or so minutes, you know, individually going over your notes from the previous two classes. So go over the modals, when to use them, how to use them, which modals there are. And then for the last few minutes, try pr actually practicing with each other. And I'll give you a picture that you can practice with. Because when you come back from the breakout rooms, I will commence the speaking part two test with all of you. Now, each pair is going to receive a different pair of pictures. So there's no, like, the pair who goes first are at a disadvantage because by the time we get to the final pair, the final pairs had all that extra time to practice what they can say about the pictures. Every pair, every pair that, of students that I test 
will have a different pair of pictures. So you have to get used to the idea of being able to speak spontaneously and pretty much instantly. Practice looking at the photographs. So look at the photographs, say what you can see, compare, contrast, and speculate in order to answer the question that you're asked. Okay, a little bit more about what we're going to do for this. This is going to be a whole class thing. So all of you will get to listen to each other while you're being tested. So I recommend that you, you have to pay attention when, the other, when a pair is being tested. A couple of reasons for this. One, it could help inspire you to use some good language. Two, it gets you more familiar with the procedure as well. And the final reason is because I will be giving you all an example of the assessment criteria. Okay, so I'll give you all an example of the assessment criteria and you will use that to give each other a grade for several criteria. So before doing that, I will go through the criteria with you and you can ask me any questions you like about anything you don't understand. And if there's time at the end, I will be asking all of you which of you have done the writing homework. And anyone who has, please, I did check last night on my emails, but I didn't see anything in my inbox, but I'll check again today as well. Because I was going to share your writing piece anonymously if possible. I don't know if you know that word. I'll type it here, anonymous. It means so no one knows who is the author of. So like anonymous is when you hide someone's name. Anonymous, anonymously is the adjectival form. And the noun is, oh, difficult to spell, anonymity, anonymity. Oh, it does have a verb form as well. But I've never spelled it before. I think it's to anonymize. Oh, I'll have to check the spelling and I'll add that to the chat at some point. It's not a word, it's not a word I tend to use often. Okay. Ah, so everyone, any questions about what we're doing today? No? Okay, then let's start with the vocabulary from the listening. Oh, and I'll just delete this because we're doing it now. Okay, class. So I'm going to give you all about five minutes because I'm going to assume that, that either you didn't do this as homework because it was optional or even if you did do it as homework it's always good to have another check you know to see if you if you do still think the answers are what you have originally chosen so you have on the left here phrases that were in the listening that we listened to the week before last and we have possible definitions and you have to match them. Okay, I'm going to give you five minutes to think about what your answers could possibly be. And then I will ask you as a whole class, I will invite you to annotate, but don't annotate just yet. Think about your own answers privately first. Okay, I'll just put myself like, on mute while you're doing that.
Okay, class. So I'd like to know what it is you think about these. So A, this is pronounced opening gambit. Which definition do you think this suits? Now, you are invited. You could annotate it if you like. I'm not sure if you remember how to use annotation features, but they are like this. You can find this in your menu bar. Just click annotate. Great core. I completely agree. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Can someone else annotate the, the second one, B? Oh, da, 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 da. Yes, good. Uh -huh. And now someone else, can you match C? Aha, very good, very good lie. Okay, and now someone else can show us what D means. Yes, good. And E, to take each other for granted. Yeah, good. Okay, so to put up with, Good. And finally, to complement each other. Excellent. Okay. So I'm going to give you an example of how to use one of these expressions. And then I'm going to pick random people in the class to try to give me an example situation uh, or a sentence in which you can use these phrases. I'll start with my own example. So when I applied for my scholarship, I had to write an essay. Now, I know that in competitions like this, first impressions really count. So for an essay, I really had to have a good opener. It took me a while, but finally I decided on my opening gambit. Okay, so that's my example. So that was my first sentence of my essay, which was my strategy to attract the reader and to give the, the reader a really good impression of me and my essay, my opening gambit, my first sentence. So that's an example of an opening gambit. In the listening, the guy used it as to mean the first thing he said to the girl that he was in love with. So to get her attention, his opening gambit. Okay. Um, Wen Yun, can you give me an example of something that, that you do that you think is time well spent and do make sure to actually use the phrase? I think doing gardening is a time well spent activity. Good, excellent. So is time well spent? So we don't need it. Ah, we don't need a determiner before that. So let's, I'm going to actually add that here so you can all see it. Gardening is time well spent. Okay. <laughs> I think the next one is possibly going to be the, a difficult one. Uh, Sunro, do you think that you can use the expression a bit of give and take in a sentence or an example? Um, uh, a good try, but I'm not sure. Um, a good friendship should always have a give and take from both people. Okay, you need the whole phrase. Your, your example is really good. 
Just say it once more with the whole phrase. Okay. A good friendship should always have a bit of give and take from both people. Good. Exactly. So this is this whole phrase goes together. The only thing that changes is the quantity. So you could say a bit of give and take, or you could say a lot of give and take, or you could say, oh, their relationship is terrible because they have they there's no give or take. Oh, there's no sorry, there's no give and take. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to say, or it's not a phrase I use very often. But your example was really good, you know. It was absolutely, it was good. So uh, a bit of give and take, you see, a lot of give and take. Now, some people may sometimes say give or take. It's give and take. Mostly it's give and take. But to say that there isn't either, we could use or. There isn't any give and take but in this com when you are saying there isn't you could also say give or take but when they both do exist you know you're saying that there's a bit or a lot of we use and to emphasize both give and take for mutual concessions and compromises okay very good uh, Peggy, can you tell me about someone or some people who get on with someone else? Basically, can you use this in a sentence to get on with? She never get on with any people. Oh, OK. So because it's third person, it's gets on. She and would have she doesn't okay other people okay in this sentence we would use doesn't because um it's in the present simple and you are describing a habitual action so or it's like a general action so just a general fact that she doesn't get on with people so we need do and when we use do, also because we're putting it in the negative. So to put it in the negative, we have to use do. And also when we use do, it's actually the, the verb do that takes any change in grammar. So because it's negative and third person, the do gets the S and the neg and the, the negation here. So if it were she gets on with people, then it would be get that has the S. So I'm going to contrast that here. So you can say she gets on with everyone or everybody. You see that the third person S is here on gets. But the moment you add the verb do, it's do that receives the third person. And the whole reason we've included it is because we needed to make it negative. So she doesn't, and now get is in its uh, infinitive form without the S. She doesn't get on with other people, or she gets on with everybody. That's the opposite. Okay. Thank you very much for your example, Faye. Okay, Alaya, do you think that you can use example E in a sentence? Mm, can I say like, mm, I'm being tired from taking for granted? Ah, okay, right. You would need- I don't know. I'm so sorry, Jeff, but you're, you, you, you were interrupted. I don't really understand the meaning yet. Hmm? Sorry, I didn't. Can you say it again? Are you understand the meaning? Uh, your audio really wasn't clear, Jeff. Do you want to type in the box what it was you were saying? I just wanted you to put this in a sentence to put up with so you can tell us something that you put up with. And the meaning of it is here. Uh, 
Uh, so, Jeff, are you typing your answer now? Ah, great, something in the chat. Okay, so let's do this. So I'm going to ask someone else then, because uh, Jeff said he's not sure how to do it. Um, Anthony, do you think you could have a try? Um, yeah. Um, I'm put up with someone who very rude. So, okay, who who is very rude to you, Anthony? Is there someone in particular? <laughs> um, some people. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh, I'll say I put up with the, the people in my class, even though they are rude. Good. Very good, Anthony. Core. Left you a difficult one. <laughs> See, I actually don't like the definition here. Um, this one, because I feel like it's missing its essential part. But do you want to have a try, Cor? Uh, I think I can try. Um... Um, actually, before before you do try core, because I'm really unsatisfied with the definition that's here, I'm actually going to give you a very quick example first, and then you can give me your own. Okay, so if you could just wait one moment. So, uh, da, 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 so uh, Andy, uh, so Andy is applying for a job, but he is severely dyslexic. He has to write an application. Okay. His girlfriend, Mandy, <laughs> his girlfriend Mandy is an English professor who writes as a hobby. Okay. So in this example, I think you probably know what it is that I'm going to say to all of you now. But in this, you would say that in this example, so Andy and his girlfriend, they are in a relationship. They complement each other. Cork, do you understand how Mandy and Andy complement each other? Can you explain to me in what way they complement each other? Um... Mandy wrote the application for Andy. She can do, yes, because she is a very good writer. So he can't write, but she can. In that way, she can help him. And let's see, let's say a little bit something else about Andy to make them mutually complementary. So apply for a job, so he has to write an application. Andy is uh, very, very tall very tall and strong and loves DIY, let's say. There's a who writes as a hobby, but she is short, cannot reach high shelves, and high shelves, and she is too busy to do DIY, and to do much needed DIY in the house. Okay, so hopefully now this is far more apparent to all of you exactly what this phrase means to complement each other. So we'd say, so in several ways now, they complement each other. Cor, can you explain a little bit more about other ways they complement each other? So she can write the application for him, but what can he do for her? Um, maybe he can help her to reach for high shelves where, where she cannot reach. Definitely, absolutely. And she never has time to do stuff in the house. But, you know, he loves DIY, although it doesn't specifically say that he has time. I know I didn't write that, but yeah, it's implied that he can do the DIY as well. Okay, so in this way, 
Andy and Mandy really complement each other. So, Cor, now can you give me your example now that you understand it a bit better, the phrase? Um. You can just make up your own example. It doesn't have to be as in-depth like this. It could just be a general statement about the importance of people complementing each other. Um, John is good in maths, but he is big in English, while his friend um, is good in English, but has probably has problem counting on maths. Okay, so then say in this way, okay, they really, you have to use the phrase core. Um, they can complement each other by teaching them their weak subjects. Good, good, exactly. So thank you so much, Cor. I really was just looking for a sentence such as, so, uh, da, 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 like in a, in a relationship it is important um, that both people complement each other. Okay, there are two meanings, two things that could possibly mean, but in this way, they really complement each other. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. It was a tough exercise. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so we have 10 minutes before our usual break time. So I'm going to give you that 10 minutes to revise, actually. So oh, one minute, just get the annotations away. Okay, just before you do take the time to revise, I just want to point out that in addition to the modals that we have been learning to talk about, that we've, we've been learning these to talk about possibility, there are other expressions we can use when speculating about photographs. Have a look at some of these examples. I did show you these last week, but reminding you of them again. And we also last week talked about stress as well. Does anybody remember where the stress should be in each sentence? What word or words should be stressed in these sentences? Do any of you remember? Please grab the annotation tools and underline which words you think they are. Good, very well remembered. It's specifically the word look in the first one. Probably they appear to be, so specifically it's the word appear. They could be, unlike, seem. Yeah, good, good work, everyone. So I've got a couple of pictures here for you to practice with. So I think that what we can do now is I'm going to put you in a breakout room for 10 minutes and you can use these pictures to help give you like a context to practice in. But generally in the breakout rooms, please go over your notes for everything that we've talked about so far with regards to modals, talking about possibility, and also these phrases as well. So these are ways you can talk about possibility without using modals. Well, except number five, of course, because number five is actually a modal. They could be, but all the others use specific verbs for uncertainty and adverbs as well. So you can use certain verbs for uncertainty 
certain adverbs as well as modals. And just a reminder of the modals, they are here, may, might, must, could, and can't. So I think actually I've changed my mind in terms of what it is I want you to do, class, because I realize that I haven't separated the pictures that you'll be tested on. I don't want you to see them ahead of time. So what I'm going to do instead is for the next 10 minutes, I'm going to leave you here in the main room to go over the, the terms by yourselves, please. So please go over the, the, the language of modals here in the main room, in, like individually by yourselves. Revise as many of the terms and ways in which you can use modals and speculative language, as much of these as possible. When we come back from the break, I will then tell you, sorry, you have 10 minutes to revise and then we'll have a break. During that break, you can, you can continue to revise if you like. It's completely up to you or you can take your 10 minute break. But right now, please stay here in the main room and revise the notes about modals and speculative language. Okay, class? You can use these two pictures here to help you to frame some thoughts, ideas, but these aren't the pictures I will test you on though. You will all have new pictures, okay? So please revise for the next seven or so minutes.
Okay, class, so if you are still here, remember to take your 10 minute break. When you come back, I'll tell you who your partner is and we'll go through speaking part two. Okay, so please be ready for your test and see you here in 10 minutes time.
Okay, hi everyone. So just let me know that you're back by switching on your cameras, please. Okay, quite a few cameras on, great. So Core, Anthony, Jeff, Wanyan, Alaya. Great, wonderful, excellent. So I just wanted to say something to, <laughs> to Wanyan, but I don't know if she's here with us yet. So I'll just go to share my screen. Okay, everyone. This is the criteria for your speaking assessment. I've crossed out the criterion interactive communication because this is something that is mostly tested in parts three and four, but especially part three. So for part two, there really isn't that much opportunity for interactive communication. I mean, you know, there is some opportunity for it, but not a lot. So for instance, you know how in speaking part two, at some point, the second person will be asked a question about the first person's pair of photos. Okay. And so, oh, I just realized actually, I think I may not actually have enough photographs. So we will do it a little bit differently this time. So I'll ask both pairs. So in every pair, I'll ask both people about the same two photos. We'll do it that way. I'm sorry, class, I only just realized I don't have enough photos for every individual person. I only got enough for each pair. Oh, silly me. Sorry about that. But that's how we will do it at each person. So in each, each pair will have their own set of photographs, but they, not each person will have their own set of photographs. You'll see how it goes. So I'll talk you through it as we go. But anyway, I just want to point your attention to the marking criteria for grammar and vocabulary, discourse management and pronunciation. I've mostly underlined the key language in band three because I believe for most of you, that's the highest that you will achieve at this point. Okay, so for grammar and vocabulary, what does this mean? That you have a good degree of control of simple grammatical forms and attempt some complex grammatical forms. So even if you attempt some more complex grammatical phrases, such as speculation, for example, then that will be acknowledged. And usually this will automatically get you up to a band three. If you use both simple forms well and complex forms well, then that's what will get you higher. Also, vocabulary matters as well, appropriate vocabulary. So what a good idea is, is when you're revising, is to look at past paper examples of pictures and think to yourself, OK, this picture is asking about leisure time. Therefore, I should study vocabulary for leisure time. Or oh, these pictures are talking about cooking, which is an occupation. So maybe I should revise vocabulary related to occupations, such as cooking. So that's how you can focus your vision for vocabulary is doing it by context. Oops. Okay. Let's have a look at discourse management. You know that you should all produce extended answers and that what you say should be relevant and try not to repeat yourself. And do try to use a range of cohesive devices. 
So these can be signposting words such as however and a use of pronouns to refer back to things you've already mentioned. as you know to signal the end of a question intonation falls um sorry dead sorry at the end of a state the end of a statement your intonation falls but at the end of a question your intonation would rise you can show varying intonation in order to show enthusiasm as well you should show enthusiasm and interest in what you're talking about in, in the speaking exam okay do you have any questions about this marking criteria at all? So after every person, every pair has spoken about their photographs, I will then go back to this slide to remind you of the criteria, and then I'll give you all just a couple of uh, a couple of minutes to give each pair um, a grade. So basically, you give them a score for grammar vocabulary, you give them a score for discourse management, and you give them a score for pronunciation. And the score can be from zero to five. Hopefully, though, no one will score zero. Hopefully. And then, of course, I will release what score I think the pair should get. Okay. So hopefully we can get through every pair. The first pair are Peyi and Anthony. Okay, Peyi and Anthony, do you think you're ready? Yes. And Anthony, are you ready? Help me. Um, yes, but my connection is not too stable. I am afraid later I will suddenly leave or what? Just try your best, absolutely, and I'll bear that in mind, okay? Okay. Okay, so pair one, Peggy and Anthony, so everybody must listen to them, make notes in their language, and then we'll give them a mark. Okay, so Peggy and Anthony, you see here a picture of people exercising in different ways. You should compare the photos and say why have the people chosen to exercise in these ways? Okay, so candidate one, I will designate as Peggy. Would you like to begin? Okay, so you need to begin pretty much straight away in speaking part two. <laughs> in the first photo, there are three girls and a boy. They are, they are exercise in a gym. And then at the second photo, there's a red shirt girl is jogging, maybe it's in the park. The both photo are having a exercise. But the difference is the first photo is having exercise in in indoor, and then the second is the second picture is having exercise in the outdoor. Then the people are chosen to exercise in this way because exercise in the gym are maybe is more comfortable because have some icon. And then there's some, uh, there's different exercise accessory, and then there's some people will choose to exercise at outdoor because um, they can see the surrounding of yeah of different place. Okay, that's great. Thank you very much, Bayi. Okay. No, it's uh, it's your turn, Anthony. So I'd like you to answer the same question about the same pair of photos. So 
who should compare the photos and say why have the people chosen to exercise in these ways? Um, yeah, as I see, the first, the first picture, they are at the gym, and the second picture, the, the ghost is um, drawing, uh, jogging outside. Mm, the first picture is at the indoor, and the second picture is outdoor. And... Yeah, as Peiyi said, um, gym will have more accessories can use. So some people will, will choose to add gym. And, and the second picture, um, same like me, I, I, I will prefer the second picture because can... Um, can breathe the fresh oxygen or what there's more freedom compared with the first picture because the first picture is at the gym and there are limited place and not freedom like the second picture okay thank you very much Anthony Okay, everyone, so I'm going to take us back to the criteria here. And could you please give a score? So you can send this to me privately if you want to be anonymous. You can send the message to me privately and you need to give both Peiyi, uh, so Peiyi, a score for grammar vocabulary, discourse management pronunciation, and a score to Anthony as well. And then I'll reveal what scores I think. You know, just, these are just preliminary scores. Uh, okay, so you need to say what the scores are for, though, everybody, because I'm just getting a number for each one. You need to give them a score for grammar vocabulary, a score for discourse management, and a score for pronunciation, and to say very clearly which score is which. So you should say, for instance, payee, grammar vocabulary equals. Anthony, discourse management equals. So could you please do that? And, you know, spends a little bit of time going through to be, you know, careful about exactly what grade you're going to give them. Thank you, exactly like that, Angela, good. Good, that was much better. Great, just a couple more, because I've got, a, most of these are for Peiyi, then a little bit, a couple more for Anthony. Good, good. Oh, Peiyi, you didn't have to give a score as well. 
That was very nice of you to give Anthony a score. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to reveal my marks. Um, as I said, normally I spend a bit more time thinking about these, but just for this in-class activity, I'll give you my preliminary scores and a very brief justification as well. Okay, so let's do PE first because she was candidate one. Okay, oh, someone's coming in now. So for Peiyi, I gave Peiyi for grammar and vocabulary a two. I gave her a two. Now, the reason for this, her, vocab so her vocabulary was quite good. It's improved. It's definitely improved since the last time um, you, you were tested Peiyi. The thing that is currently keeping you in a low band is the fact that you didn't use any complex grammatical structures. So until you do that, you can't move up to a three. For instance, you didn't use a single um, structure for, uh, for possible, you didn't use any modals for, for speculating or anything like this. And you only used one term for comparison once. I mean, you, you did compare the photos, but you didn't, you only once used an actual signposting word for comparison. Okay, so that's the reason why I put you in two, because your vocabulary is definitely improved, but not a three because the grammar. Okay, discourse management, I've scored you a three because your, the answers were extended. There was hardly any hesitation. All contributions were relevant. There wasn't really any repetition and your cohesive dice devices were, were decent as well. And pronunciation also, I scored you within a three. It was easy to understand you. There was some variation in intonation, uh, so on and so forth. Okay. So well done, Peggy. So that's a two, three, three, your score. Okay, Anthony. I've given you a one for grammar and vocabulary because there wasn't much use of a range of vocabulary for the context. And it really seemed like you were relying on what Peyi had said rather than coming up with your own ideas. So any vocabulary you did use was vocabulary you just heard from Peyi. So I would recommend for your revision that you revise vocabulary by context possible contexts that you might see the pictures uh, come in. So like about sport or about occupations or about things people do every day, leisure time, so on and so forth. Also, the grammatical structures were very simple as well. You didn't really do that much comparison of the photos, not compared to Peggy. Okay, your answers were also quite short. So I've given you a one for discourse management as well. And there are a lot of pauses and hesitations as well. And the cohesive devices were basic. But for pronunciation, I've given you a two for pronunciation. Clear, intelligible. Um, but definitely some work improvement needs to be done with pronunciation in terms of making you seem more kind of fluent and varying your intonation. Okay, thank you very much. So answer D was a one, one, two. So one, one, two. Thank you very much, Peggy and Anthony. The next pair, Shinro and Jeff. Shinro, Jeff, are you ready? Yes. Okay, wait, where did Jeff go? Ah, there he is. Yeah. Great, Jeff. Please try to make sure that your audio is very clear. So no background noise that is turned up because if I can't hear or understand what you're saying, you can't receive a grade. There's so much background noise. Are you not at home right now? Mm. 
I'm thinking I might have to change you, Jeff, because I don't think you'll be able, I won't be able to understand anything you're saying. So Jeff, would you mind if I replace you with Core? Sure. Okay, Core, can I ask you to be Shinro's partner instead? Yes. Great, excellent. So your photos, you have a different set of photos. Okay, so I'm going to um, designate Shinro as candidate one and core as candidate two. Okay, so uh, to Shinro first. Uh, Shinro, you see here before you two photographs of people shopping in different places. I'd like you to look at the photos, compare them, and say why would someone go shopping here? Okay, you may begin. Um, okay. In the first photo, a girl is buying some vegetables or fruits from a store in a market. And she might be bargaining for the cheaper price with the store seller. Um, while in the second photo, a girl is choosing um, some clothes or shirts or maybe some dresses in a luxury shop. Maybe it could be located in a, a shopping mall. The similarity between the two photos is they are shopping there to buy something, but the difference in the first photo and the second photo is the first photo is in the market which sells things which are much, much cheaper compared to the second photo. But, sorry, however, in the second photo, the things will be sold at higher price but better quality compared to the first photo. Um, yeah, that's all I think. Um, okay, so I just uh, ju just something I want to say is mm -hmm. that uh, just make it clear when you're moving from comparison to answering the question. Because usually you would compare the photos and then speculate to answer the question. But I'm happy with what you've got. So I was just saying that for like future. Thank you so much, Sindra. Okay. Uh, and core. It is your turn. Yes, so you. you see two photos of people shopping in two different places. I'd like you to look at the photos, compare them, and say why would someone go shopping here? Okay, so can I start now, Dika? Yes. <clears throat> so in the first photo, in the first photo, we can see a girl is buying some fresh vegetables at the market and we can see the seller is packing up his vegetables and in the second photo we can see another girl he is checking on the dress or the shirt probably checking on the quality or the price and we and we can and according to the first photo, no, yeah, I say that again. Um, for so the differences in the between the first photo and the second photo is the first photo is located at the market, and the price there is more cheap and mostly more dirty. And in the second photo, it is located at a shopping mall, and the price is higher and it is more clean compared to the first photo. Um, uh, why will someone go shopping there? The first people will shop at the first photo, which is in the market, because 
the price is cheaper and they are selling more variety of fresh special vegetables compared to the shopping mall because some there are not as as cheap and as fresh as the market while people will go shopping and like the photo and like the second photo because it is more clean and the things selling there are higher quality compared to the market uh, i think that's all Sorry, muted yeah, myself. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about that. Um, thank you so much. You both did a really great job there. Uh, absolutely. Uh, let's go back to here, everybody. And could you both give a score? Make it clear who you're scoring and for what category as well. Okay, so give you all a few moments to do that. You guys are so much faster than I am. I'm still thinking about it. I'm <laughs> still thinking about this course. Quest, just one more. I know most of you have given me the scores already, but just one more minute, please. Okay, sorry for that delay. Okay, I always like to take my time to really think about and like ask myself, am I sure about these marks? Okay, great guys. So I'm, I've am i received a vote from all of you. Thank you so much. Your scores are getting closer to the actual scores that I would give everybody. So everyone's doing well in terms of understanding the criteria. So let's talk about Chanel first. Okay, so for grammar and vocabulary, I have given Chanel, let's see if anyone else agreed with this. Ah, 
okay, I gave Chanel higher than everybody else did. <laughs> so I gave Chanel a four for grammar and vocabulary. So guys, just remember to keep your cameras on, please. So if your camera is working, please do put them on. Thank you. So I gave, I guess, draw a four for grammar and vocabulary. I don't know if anybody noticed, but she, okay, so I'm going to highlight the part. Okay, so I think most of you said three because attempts some complex grammatical forms. Now, the key word here is attempts. Shinro didn't just attempt, she succeeded. She succeeded in using complex grammatical forms. So, yeah, Shiro used a lot of speculation language and some very good signposting language for comparison as well. But what was most impressive was the range of different modals and speculative language, and they were all used correctly. They weren't used as comfortably and fluently as a native, but that's just more practice, that's all. But they were all there, they were used, they were used correctly. And I was really impressed. Really good job, Suno. So I put her here. Okay, so for discourse and management, I've given it row four as well. Answers were extended. The, I don't remember hearing any presentations, contributions were relevant. I didn't hear any repetition and there were a range of good cohesive devices. And I thought that this was between a five and a three. So I've settled her here at a four. Pronunciation is also a four as well. Shino has really good control, intelligible and general intonation is really good. Um, could work on word stress though, but generally I placed her here. Okay, so core. Core was a little bit difficult because unfortunately core didn't really use many complex grammatical forms. So I didn't really hear any, uh, the only thing I remember hearing that wasn't really present tense was future simple. So that moves him above a band one but I didn't really hear anything complex. So I've given core a two for grammar and vocabulary. There were quite a few hesitations and pauses. Oh, I can't even read my own writing. <laughs> and I've given core a two here as well. For pronunciation, I've given core a three. Because your pronunciation, your pronunciation is really good, despite like the hesitations. Core, by the way, I think you are a really great speaker, Core. I just think you need to get a bit more practice in this particular format of speaking, because I think you're capable of achieving a lot higher than what you have. So just more practice, please. Okay, so our next pair is Angela and Lai. So Angela and Lai, are you ready? Yes. Fantastic. Okay, yeah. Lai. Uh, Lai, can I ask you to be candidate one and Angela to be candidate two? And your pictures are here. Okay. So Lai, here you see a picture of people enjoying different activities in their free time. I'd like you to compare the photographs and say why do people enjoy activities like these in their free time? Okay, so you can feel free to begin. Okay, so in the first photo, they are like um, husband and wife and uh, I think they're cycling in a desert whereas in the second photo 
there are like many people and I think it could be a city. Yeah. Mm. So I think the similarity uh, of the both, both photos is that um, they are um, enjoying themselves. Um, but I think in the first photo, there are, they can breathe more fresh air. Whereas in the second photo, um, there are more pollution in the big city. Um, so for the question, I think that the people will enjoy the activities in the first photo because um, they can breathe their fresh air and they can enjoy doing them activities. So they're like freedom because they did not have um, any uh, pollution or the something bad. Whereas in the second photo, I think they can um, more on having a uh, technology. I think they are more on like work or something. So um, they did not um they did not very healthy because they did not um, breathe many fresh air. Um, that's all. Thank you so much, Lai. Um. But like, I just want to say preliminary, just um, quickly, that you have improved a lot, by the way, from the last time you did a practice speaking like this. Your fluency, your vocabulary, and you're making fewer errors in your speaking as well. So I just heard a massive improvement in your speaking. So well done. Okay. Uh, okay, and Angela? So if you're ready, um, you see two photographs here of people enjoying activities in their free time. I'd like you to compare the photographs and say why people enjoy activities like these in their free time. Um, in the first picture, it is in a village. And the second picture is in a city. The first picture is a man and a woman was riding a bicycle and the second picture is a lot of people for skating. Mm. People enjoy activities like this in their free time because because these activities can pull them close, closer to the nature and they can get, get out of their busy and monotonous routine. It can relax the stress and in the first picture, they can breathe breathe fresh air and, and enjoy some scenery view. Yeah, that's all. Okay, thank you very much, Angela. Uh, okay, so you are person two. Um, okay, so everybody, I would like you to give the same thing again. Please give a score to both Lai and Angela.
Okay, thank you everybody for your votes. I'm going to reveal the scores um, and a bit quicker this time. Uh, sometimes it's harder to grade uh, pairs and sometimes it's easier. And for this one, I want to talk about lie first. So lie, um, I just want to do a comparison of your, your performance last time. So the last couple of times that you've done any speaking, whether it was for an exam or in class practice, your score, so not this time, but last time, all your previous attempts, I seem to remember that your performance has always just sat within the one, band one. It's always been like this. So I'm really impressed and happy to say that you've improved your performance a lot. You've moved yourself a whole band higher. I gave you a two for grammar and vocabulary, a two for discourse management, and I gave you a three for pronunciation. Now, I know you may be thinking, if you're saying you're, you're so much better, why aren't you even higher? But it actually takes a significant jump to move to a band higher. It really does. And I have no doubt whatsoever that you can easily make the jump next time to three. Honestly, I think you're on a really good track for improving. So my justification for picking two for grammar and vocabulary, I'll try to be as quick as I can. You really did, a, you, I wanted to put you in three, four, attempt some complex grammatical forms, but you attempted to do something, to do something complex, but you used a simple structure to do it, if that makes sense. So I could see that, I could hear that you were trying to speculate, but your speculations were limited to, I think it can, or I think they can. So that's still technically present tense. So I couldn't therefore put you in three, but your vocabulary has improved a lot since last time. Also your, ex the, how extended your answers are, are really, uh, I've got really good, much better. What you need to do to improve, to get to a three is focus on, your range of cohesive devices. That's what will get then get you up to number three. Pronunciation, good, a lot better because you are more fluent. I'm very pleased to see the improvement by, absolutely. Okay, so let's talk about Angela. Now, Angela, I don't feel that you performed as well as you have done or as well as you could do because I actually only gave you ones for every category. I didn't hear any attempts at more complex grammatical forms and the vocabulary was very limited as well. Your responses were short, there were pauses, hesitations and repetitions. And because of that, it affected your pronunciation as well. But the thing is, Angela, I know that you can do better. So I'm thinking that maybe you should practice more because I have heard you do better than this than you did today. I've heard you. I know, I know that you can get, uh, you're capable of, I think you, right now, your highest capability, I think, is a three. Most of the time, when I hear you speak, it would be in the band two. Please keep practicing. You can do this, okay? Okay, and our final pair, I'll try to do this as quickly as possible. So the final pair is Wanyan and Alaya. So Wanyan, Alaya, are you ready? Yes. Excellent. So your picture is, oh, we have two to pick from. Mm, oh, 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 maybe this one. <laughs> okay. So Nira and Alaya, your pick, these are your pictures. I would like you to look at the photographs, describe what you see, compare the photographs, and say, why might these people be spending time outside? Wenyun, I would like to designate you as candidate one. So when you're ready, can you start?
So, Wan Yan. So, in, in the first photograph, I can see that a mother and a daughter are sitting on the grass, enjoying the sight of nature. And so the second paragraph. But uh, the first photograph, there are two person, person and I think they are much more happier. Whereas the second photo, there is only one person sitting on the grass alone. The similarity of this photo are they are spending their free time outside somewhere near the nature and so they can release their stress and breathe fresh air and enjoy the sight of nature. However, the differences is the, the differences is the first photograph, I think they are just staying there for a moment or not, not too long because they haven't bring any thing or any bags or mat I think so they'll be going to the other place maybe later however for the second photograph the people is well packed and I can see something waterproof beside him I have to stop you there, Wen Yun, because in the exam, you would only have one minute to talk and you've gone over that. So I'll ask you to stop there. And a lawyer, please, could I ask you to say what you see in the pictures, compare and answer the question, please? Yes. So both photos show people spending their time in a calm place and a quiet place. Um, for, for the first picture, I can see a mother and her daughter spending their time together and having a, they seems like having a good time. And whereas in the second picture, he may look like he having a problem and he want to release his stress and want to relax. And so he choose to spend his time alone in a calm place and such a beautiful nature. So, I think they choose to spend their time outside because they want to get a fresh care, fresh air and want to relax and have more uh, have more memory. Yeah, thank you. I keep forgetting to like unmute myself. <laughs> thank you very much to both of you. Now, can everybody please uh, quickly, <laughs> sorry to brush you, I just got another meeting to go to, uh, give a score to each speaker. Okay, thank you very much for all your scores. Okay, so I'm gonna very quickly go over the scores that I would give to, to both of you. So we'll start with Wen Yen. 
So um, Wanyan, you made a, a lot of grammatical errors with very, you know, very simple grammatical errors. And there weren't really any attempts to try to use more complex forms. The most sophisticated thing I heard was good signposting for comparison, such as whereas. So I definitely think, because Wanyan, I know that you can normally speak like better normally. And I think that, you know, generally from what I've heard you in the class, I would generally put you in a two. But for this task, I think that, you know, there were lots of mistakes of very simple forms and no attempt at complex. So I gave you a one for grammar and vocabulary. I also gave you one for discourse management because there were a lot of hesitations and pauses as you were thinking about your ideas. And I think that is one of your biggest problems is that you need to get used to just speaking spontaneously instead of trying to think what your answer could be. Because I notice you do this all the time in the class. You need to try to practice more just speaking spontaneously. Don't think of it first in Chinese and then translate it. Try to get yourself in the habit of just speaking. I know it's hard. I know. I practice speaking French and you know <laughs> it's difficult to not do that but for pronunciation I did give you a two four so you were slightly higher for pronunciation okay so Alaya I gave you a three four um, grammar and vocabulary because you have a good degree of control not perfect though there were errors in some simple uh, in some simple forms but generally you have a good degree of control and you attempted some complex grammatical forms as well. That was clear. And the vocabulary was really good. It was very appropriate. Okay. And for discourse management, I give you a three as well. The, your answers were extended, relevant. There really wasn't any repetition. Cohesive devices were good. And your pronunciation was really good. And I gave you a four. Okay, everybody. I now really have to brush off to my meeting. Thank you so much, class. I actually didn't plan to give you any homework this week as a, a little break, because being tested like this is quite intense, isn't it? So class, thank you so much, and I will see you all next week. Take care, everyone. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher.